So the road to civil war picks up with the new Avengers one-shot, The Illuminati. And this comic book is particularly important in the realm of Marvel Comics. Not necessarily because it sets us on the road to understanding how the civil war really kind of develops and begins to unfold, but because this comic gives us the backstory of The Illuminati. And The Illuminati were introduced to us in the new Avengers with uh, volume one, issue number one. But we didn't really know how it was that the, the Illuminati had come together. They simply were just there. They were first introduced during the six-part storyline, The Breakout. And then, of course, they came across the reintroduction of the century into Marvel Comics in 2005. But we didn't know how this took place. We didn't know how the Illuminati had formed, if any meetings had taken place or anything like that. This one-shot gave us that backstory. And what we see is that after the events of the kree scroll War, which was a war between the Kree and the Skrull, two alien species that had been warring for millions of years, Tony Stark had really kind of come to the understanding that had the uh, most prominent leader leaders, I guess, in the uh, superhero community shared information that each of them had individually, the conflict could have gone a much different way. As opposed to really kind of impacting Earth and coming as close to Earth as it had, they could have really kind of executed preemptive strikes so that it never really came as close to Earth as it did. And so he organizes this sort of leadership gathering, this sort of uh, meeting in Wakanda. And what we see is that Tony Stark himself, as the de facto leader of the Avengers, so to speak, uh, we see Charles Xavier as the leader of of the X-Men, uh, Black Bolt as a leader of the Inhumans, Doctor Strange as the Sorcerer Supreme, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, and Namor the Submariner of the Kingdom of Atlantis really kind of coming together and uh, really kind of, uh, I guess, maybe mulling over this idea of forming a kind of secret government, so to speak. Now, they wouldn't really form a government in the traditional sense. That is to say, they would impose laws on the superhuman community. They would really just kind of be the hidden hand behind, behind a lot of things that take place. And we th see this really kind of playing out. Initially, people are not very receptive to the idea of a secret government or an Illuminati. And in fact, Charles Xavier voices his concerns and says, this is really kind of the base fear that virtually everyone who has a fear of superhumans has. They're afraid that at some point along the line that this exact kind of thing will form. Uh, Tony Stark, of course, combats this and says it is done with the best of intentions. But as we've seen in the past, sometimes the best of intentions turn into the worst case scenarios. So ultimately, the group really kind of uh, decides to go along with it. Of course, Black Panther chooses not to accept the invitation. And over the course of this comic, we see the Illuminati executing uh, various plans. We, of course, see the Illuminati uh, make the decision to kick the Incredible Hulk out of the planet Earth and send him to a different planet just because of the fact that due to the, his violent nature and Bruce Banner's, uh, for the most part, inability to control the Incredible Hulk, he really presents more of a danger than virtually any other Earthbound character at that particular point in time. The real real kind of nail in the coffin, I guess, the real kind of uh, lead up to the Civil War is when we see the third meeting of the Illuminati coming together. And at this time, the House of M storyline has come to an end. And so Charles Xavier is missing. No one knows where he is. And we see that Tony Stark presents the Illuminati with a bill, with the uh, Superhuman Registration Act that is going to go before Congress. And initially, he believes they should side with it. Now, from here, we pick up with the Fantastic Four issues number 536 and 537. But unlike the new Avengers Illuminati storyline, we don't really see anything involving the uh, Superhuman Registration Act for the most part. What we actually see is that Thor's hammer, which had previously belonged to Thor, who most people at this point had uh, assumed to have been dead, falls to the planet Earth and lands in Oklahoma. We see the Fantastic Four receive a distress call, and when they arrive, they see a military base which is being overrun by Doctor Doom and his Doombots. Over the course of these two comics, we ultimately see that the goal of Doctor Doom is to attain the hammer of Thor, and ultimately he fails. And in kind of a bit of humor towards the end, we see that the Thing, Ben Grimm, tries to pick up the hammer of Thor and, of course, is unsuccessful. From here, we pick up with the last three issues that are part of the Road to Civil War storyline, which is The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, issues number 529 to 531. And this, I would say, is probably the most important part of the Road to Civil War storyline. What we see here are a couple things taking place. The first is that Tony Stark, who has formed a very close friendship with uh, Peter Parker, presents him with a new Spider-Man suit. And this new Spider-Man suit is really kind of intriguing here. Uh, what's really amazing about this is that it allows for a multitude of abilities that Spider-Man simply just didn't have before. Uh, he can change his suit into camouflage so he can appear uh, with virtually any other Spider-Man suit that he has ever worn. He can, in fact, uh, have his Spider-Man suit camouflage itself in such a way that it looks like he's not wearing anything at all so that he doesn't have to walk around with what appears to be a Spider-Man suit under his normal clothing, 
he will simply just appear wearing an overshirt and maybe a t-shirt underneath or something like that. We also see that there are some appendages that extend themselves from the back of the suit. And these appendages allow him lines of sight and they also allow some measure of uh, a physical attack. But as Tony Stark tells, uh, Cap or, I'm sorry, tells Spider-Man, the uh, arms really aren't designed to be a full-on attack kind of uh, attribute. And so they're very fragile and they can easily be destroyed. And we see, of course, that Spider-Man really kind of takes this suit to uh, to the streets and really kind of tests it for what it can do. And we see that he's able to glide with the suit and, and various things like that. But the real kind of meat and potatoes of the road to civil war really kind of picks up with issue number 530 and into 531. And what we see with these issues and including 529 is that uh, uh, Tony Stark comes to Spider-Man and asks for his help, but will not tell him what it is that he's asking for his help with unless he swears to secrecy that he will not tell anybody what it is that's going on. And ultimately, uh, Tony Stark presents Peter Parker with an early copy of the Superhuman Registration Act. And following towards the end of the series, we see that basically Peter Parker and Tony Stark appear before Congress in an attempt to assuage them from the idea of passing the Superhuman Registration Act. We see some impassionate speeches here. We see how uh, Congress comes along with the idea of saying that people who drive vehicles have to be licensed. People who fly planes have to be licensed. And of course, uh, uh, Peter Parker counters this by saying that the those individuals chose that career path. They chose to become pilots. They chose to become doctors and lawyers and, and the like. People who became superpower or superheroes uh, really didn't choose that. Their powers just sort of came upon them, and they chose the best road they knew how to take to be responsible. You know, he really kind of uh, touches back on the words that Uncle Ben had taught him, that with great power comes great responsibility. Ultimately, as the meetings begin to come to an end, we see that Tony Stark is assaulted by, Cap or by uh, Titanium Man. And after being assaulted by Titanium Man, Peter Parker really kind of has speculation that Tony Stark orchestrated the whole thing. Tony Stark isn't necessarily necessarily direct at first, but ultimately he says, no, I did not organize this. But at the end of uh, Spider-Man issue number uh, 531, we see that ultimately it was Tony Stark that orchestrated the entire attack. And as we begin to come to a close, as we begin to see the final pages of uh, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, issue number 531, we see that Peter Parker is in front of the TV and falls asleep to a newscast, which is ultimately the event that sets off the entire Civil War storyline where the new warriors are involved in a conflict in Stamford, Connecticut that costs the lives of somewhere around 600 people and really begins to turn the tide in terms of public support for a Superhuman Registration Act. Welcome to the Weekly Poll, your number one source for comic book discussions. I'm Benny from Comic Story, and that's your cube. See, I've oh, okay. What's going on? What's going on, guys? This is Rob. I'm from uh, Marvel Explained, and this is David. I don't have a channel, but I should. <laughs>